give you an overview of the agenda what we're going to cover for this session. Um, and starting off with, we're going to be um, going over some background on the um, COIS app, the Catalog Open Infrastructure Services, which you'll be hearing about uh, throughout this um, throughout this week. And we'll be giving you uh, actually a little demo of it for those of you who haven't seen it. Um, we're also going to go over some of the research methodology involved in this and the research findings uh, from our user testing work with COIS. Talk about next steps for COIS and have a discussion with you all uh, based on what we presented for you today. So you get an opportunity to discuss amongst yourselves, share with us um, the, the information that you discover in this session and information that you know about COIS coming into this. And we'll have a lovely discussion. And then in an hour, those of you, especially in the evening time in the European time zones, can go to bed and enjoy your rest of your evening. Um, so just a review of uh, COIS, the Catalog of Open Infrastructure Services. Uh, and some of this was covered by my colleague, Tanya Hernandez-Ortiz, uh, when we, in her session earlier today as well, um, we, we envisioned the catalog as a way to address information asymmetries in the space. Uh, we were presented with information, people saying that, well, I don't really know what services are out there, and I don't know much about the services. It's kind of hard to know, particularly compare um, in any meaningful way a service with, with another. We wanted to view this as a way to foster greater understanding of the services that are available and cultivate a deeper understanding of how services are provided. So how, how is the sausage kind of made um, in, this, in this work? It was a prototype. Um, it was really just us uh, coming together, identifying um, those services and, and being able to uh, just really test out, is this even valuable? What information do we have? How can we present it? Um, is it valuable so we can understand the needs of various stakeholders, funders, providers, and users? And as has been mentioned um, in previous sessions, uh, funders themselves are not a monolithic group, and we recognize that. So it's not just philanthropies. There's also, of course, national funders. Um, there are institutions, academic institutions as well that provide a, a good deal of funding to these projects. Um, so there's a number, even within these broad categories, there's a, a number of um, different types of um, uh, interests and needs that are represented um, by those categories. And ultimately, it's, we're building on the work of others. And we freely admit, uh, as you saw in Caitlin's opening today, um, the work of others, Educopia in particular, SCOMCAT, Iraq Open Access uh, Collective, Drone, and, and Bianca have done some great work in this space, as well as um, under integrating the principles outlined in the principles of open Australia infrastructure. So we're standing on the shoulders of giants with this work and really trying to build and, and provide value to it as well. Um, just to give you a sense of you know, how we did this, um, the data collected from the 10 services that we identified, um, these were collected from provider and funder websites. Um, annual reports, for those uh, based in the United States, the in, incorporated as non, nonprofits, um, um, Form 990 data, which you may have heard us talk about, this is the standard reporting for nonprofit finances in the US, and surveys and interviews with service providers. So as part of this, we did interviews with the service providers um, to, to get some more information on how they deliver services and some of their interests, needs, perspectives um, as part of this work. So it's very important. And I want to emphasize the, the 10 services we selected was um, intended to create a meaningful sample. Um, it was done in conversation amongst us, the IOI team at the time, about what those services were um, without any prejudice to like why one was selected over another or anything like that. It was really just trying to match trying to get uh, services of different sizes, serving different types of uh, roles in different places around the world. So by no means representative. And um, as some of you may know, we actually did an interest survey with other service providers uh, in order to gauge level of interest amongst others with the eventual expansion of, of the catalog, um, which I'm happy to talk about here uh, at the end of this presentation. And luckily, so after we, we, we built this COIS application, we had a designer develop it and service the data for us and did a beautiful job with it. Um, but we knew we needed to do that testing and understand the value uh, proposition for it. So we engaged a, a user testing expert, uh, Tamir, excuse me, Tamor Azizuddin, uh, who has done some amazing work, uh, you know, working in technology spaces with apps very similar to COIS um, and did an amazing job kind of engaging with a number of pe different people in the space um, to truly really get a sense of what's the value of COIS? How do we go about improving it? What are the lessons that we've learned from this? So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Taymor, and he's going to lead us through this presentation and a demo demonstration and presentation on, on our findings. So Taymor, if you want to take it from here. Hey, everyone. Excited to be here. Um, I will kick it off with a quick demo of COIS so you can all take a look at what it actually looks like. So this is all available on the IOI website. Um, so, you know, investinopen.org, 
resources. And you can click right into COIS here. This intro page has quite a bit of background information on you know, what went into it, documentation, all that good stuff for folks to review in more detail. And here are the 10 organizations which Richard mentioned, which are actually included in COIS. So these are the COIS entries, and this is, this is the actual catalog. So as an example, let's click in a crossref here. Each entry has four different tabs, providing a basic level of information, you know, quick overview, organizational details, finances, and then some information on how the service is delivered. Each of these sections has a number of different data points um, kind of outlining um, the service summary here. We've got transformative influence, uh, a little bit of information on how this organization engages with the community. Throughout COIS, you'll also find researcher comments, which are created by IOI to provide extra context on some of the information here. The organization tab has more information on affiliations, board structure, organizational structure, and who actually is involved with this organization. The finance tab has information. This is all pulled from the form 990s, which were mentioned uh, on a previous slide. And we've also got some self, uh, self-reported measures here. Uh, funding sources and their importance to the organization, as well as some cost breakouts on what the budget actually looks like. This is, once again, um, collected from interviews and surveys with the provider themselves. And finally, the delivery tab has information on how the service is actually delivered. Some of these fields are blank, we're not available, but we've got the size of the user base, the tech stack, and other details associated with that. So for those interested, you can return to the catalog and click around and check out some of the other entries. So jumping into the user research we did, um, first want to give a quick overview of you know, why we did this as well as a methodology. So as Richard mentioned, you know, this is a very rich prototype and IOI wanted to understand, um, you know, one, how does this relate to the actual way that funding decisions are being made? So what is the funding process for different funders? What does that look like? How might COIS plug into that or help kind of make some of these, these pieces easier or more transparent? Uh, and then secondly, we had uh, re research respondents engage with the actual prototype, and we observed the way they used it, uh, and we got down to, you know, what are the information fields that are helpful versus not helpful, what's good about this, what's missing from this, um, and, and where are, you know, things that are maybe uh, replicating what, 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 what funders already use from other sources. We did a total of 12 interviews. We tried to have a pretty good mix of different types of respondents here. So we tried to have different regional representation, different types of institutions. Uh, this reflects everything from funders who have very long-term horizons and are making kind of moonshot um, funding decisions all the way down to very pragmatic folks who are looking to use and implement uh, an open infrastructure serv uh, service into their community today. Uh, these interviews were one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit under an hour each, and they were semi-structured. So we left these very open and very broad. We wanted to capture some of the differences and some of the nuances and how different types of funders approach these decisions and how they might use the tool. So we let them kind of run with you know, the, 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 the talking points and the way they responded to the interview. Jumping into the findings here. As many of you may expect, uh, the way funding decisions are made varies considerably. Uh, so different kind of priorities and strategies from the funder, different values and different ways of thinking about open infrastructure, uh, the amount of funding being deployed, um, you know, very large funding decisions are, are made with a different level of due diligence from, from smaller funding decisions, the amount of resourcing available to evaluate different open infrastructure organizations, uh, use cases was, were, were particularly important for those who are looking to implement a tool for their communities to use. And regional context was also key here. So the needs of, say, folks in the global south versus the global north, different languages, uh, different even levels of, 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 of access to bandwidth all played into account here. In many cases, there were philanthropies who differentiated themselves or looked to fill different funding gaps on purpose. 
and we're looking to have less overlap and, and looking to differentiate their standards for how they make funding from others. And so that's reflected in this quote from a respondent here, where they look at maybe, you know, a baseline set of standards, and then they apply their own analysis on top of that. So despite all these differences, I think very broadly speaking, um, you know, the trend we found was three phases of decision making around open infrastructure. This is by no means universal, but this was kind of the rough trend we found through the conversations we had. We can kind of break up the funding decision making process into these three phases. So the first was discovery. And this is simply becoming aware that organizations exist. So whether someone had um, money that they wanted to use to fund uh, organization in pursuit of a particular strategy, or whether they were looking for natural service to employ and, and to implement into their community, um, how would they go about finding those organizations? And how would they go about figuring out what services to evaluate? Next up was preliminary information gathering. So this was at a very basic level. Um, do these open infrastructure providers have values and attitudes towards open infrastructure that align with the funder? And does the feature and functionality of their service align with what the funder is looking for? After that, they would progress to a more detailed analysis. And this is typically where due diligence would happen. And this varied from an entire team of financial analysts pouring over 990s and plugging data into their own formulas and doing all kinds of custom analysis and reference checks to a very simple kind of quick review of the data and, and kind of a gut check on, does this organization meet our needs and are they aligned with what we want to accomplish? Now, as we look at these different phases across the funding decision-making process, uh, there are likely opportunities for COIS to help with information sharing, uh, transparency, and openness throughout this process. So the way discovery happened was typically very relationship-based. Uh, often, respondents would start with looking through their networks, calling, calling different folks up and understanding who they should talk to, Conferences came up, social media came up, but a lot of this was based on relationships and word of mouth. So there may be an opportunity for COIS here to help increase awareness of open infrastructure services and even just simply having that catalog, especially if we look ahead to, you know, a potential future version of COIS with search and filter functionality, having that catalog where folks can input their requirements and get a list back of all the different organizations that may meet their needs, that does not seem to exist today. Um, and that's, that's an area where, where COIS can help increase transparency pretty quickly. Uh, next up, when we look at preliminary information gathering, you know, this tends to be general fact finding, values alignment. This was often cumbersome and time consuming because a lot of this basic information does not live in one place. So when we look at COIS bringing together different kind of information from different sources, it's not always easily available and just having that available at a glance. Um, you know, and the second area where COIS may be able to add value here is facilitating introductions at this kind of introductory stage of the decision-making process. And then finally, when it comes to detailed analysis, my sense after talking to these folks is a lot of this is custom work and some of this may involve bespoke um, analysis that different funding organizations may continue to do, uh, but COIS can still provide a standard set of data and kind of a baseline for starting this process. Uh, and having that all in one place and accessible to everyone, including those who may not have the resources to do rigorous analysis themselves. This phenomena came up, um, you know, with, with a few folks we spoke to of funding follows funding. And I'll give everyone a moment here to read through these two quotes from, from two of the respondents we spoke with. So I think this really exemplifies how increasing transparency in the space and simply just having a catalog to allow different actors and players within the ecosystem to become aware and connect with each other can go a long way in improving transparency and making the entire ecosystem more open. When we look at the different use cases for COIS and the different areas where it can provide value, uh, there were five kind of key buckets we came up with. So first was just basic open values education. Uh, quite a few of the folks we spoke with, especially at academic institutions and, and those working with national um, uh, uh, funding providers, there was a lot of work going on doing basic education on, you know, one, the fact that 
open infrastructure exists and that that is a viable option in many, in many cases to commercial services. Uh, and then two, on just some of the basic benefits of open values. Uh, so this may be an area where IOI and COIS can help provide um, kind of that third party stamp of approval, right? So these organizations have been vetted uh, through COIS. There is some level of data available about them to help increase trust across the ecosystem. Uh, next is discovery, which we, we spoke about quite a bit. Uh, third was relationship building. So quite a few funders expressed interest in introductions with other funders who are interested in, in their space, uh, working with others to co-fund interesting new projects, uh, getting access to subject matter experts, uh, as well as getting access to folks who had kind of been through a particular situation before. So one funder brought up an example of one of his portfolio organizations, uh, which was facing a particular challenge. And he was looking for access to experts who had been through that before and understanding how they got over the hump, uh, how they could learn from others who had been through it before and avoid the same mistakes and, and how they might've succeeded. Finally, information transparency. So a lot of the information um, that COIS is, is, is looking at uh, just does not exist publicly today. In some cases, some organizations have this on their website. In other cases, folks have to dig around for it or go through a couple layers of, of conversations to get some of this. So providing this you know, in an, in an open, easy way across the board for everyone in a publicly available forum. And then finally, the last piece here was advocacy and sharing success stories. So one of the key themes that emerged with funders was um, sustainability and ensuring that open infrastructure services could become sustainable and whether they could become sustainable. Uh, quite a few funders shared stories of organizations where funding was provided at a particular inflection point to help sustainability. And you know the importance of sharing some of these stories to help convince some of the naysayers that sustainability is possible in open infrastructure. And once again, helping not only other funders, but other open infrastructure services going through these same journeys, uh, how to overcome some of these challenges and, and how they um, move past a particular roadblock to become sustainable. And I think this, this quote really kind of drives this home. Um, you know, having not just a handful of case studies, but having much deeper entries for some of these organizations which have become sustainable and, and allowing others to learn from them. Uh, there's quite a bit of institutional knowledge that exists within some of the, the key players at these organizations and making that publicly accessible can help drive the entire ecosystem forward. So Richard, I'll kick it back over to you for next steps. Great. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. Um, so, um, so the next steps, I um, kind of alluded to this. So we've we've done some, uh, the technical conceptual documentation is available online for COIS. Uh, we've, and as was noted in Tamor's research, we're doing more work to integrate that into the app so you can see if, you know, when you, you see a phrase or term that's not quite clear, you can click on it and be taken to the documentation. So there's some more work around that, but that is available to define some of the key terms we use in this and in COIS. Uh, we did an interest survey with other providers. We got some great feedback uh, from those who are interested, trying to understand the burden. And that's come up in, in our past conversations, right? How can we best manage the burden of, of this data collection um, with providers who have you know, varying levels of resources to be able to provide information into this? And the interviews, stakeholder interviews that Tamor just summarized for us. So we've done some great work on this. We intend to going forward, develop a, a strategy plan for COIS as well as a maintenance plan, outlining how we're going to, to do this work. It was an unfortunate reality that to get this prototype done, it was a, a very um, artisanal process, very highly manual process. Uh, and we intend to automate it whatever we can and make this a much easier process for everyone involved. And then develop a way to do an ongoing evaluation in line with some of the work that Tamor's done uh, to be getting constant feedback about this. Um, being mindful of some of the things that have come up so far, you know, that this this data collection isn't extractive, that there it is a, a very a process that is um, less burdensome on everyone and that provides value to everyone who's who's involved in this process. So uh, that's where we're going uh, next with COIS. 